Hey everyone, Carrie Beck here with Family eBiz, where we help families and individuals start their online business and scale their business so they can find freedom, freedom to do what you want to do. Today, what I wanna to talk to you about is making the best decisions in your business. We talk a lot about strategies and I can tell you how to send emails and set up sales funnels and you know all this, create a course and sell it, all of that. But I don't know if you realize how important this part is, how you're making decisions, how you're spending your time. And so that's what I want to talk to you about, three or four different areas as well. So before we dive in, if you have not subscribed to this particular channel, would you please um, subscribe or leave us a review as well? That would mean the world to me. And share this with just one friend that you know it would help. All right. So. Let's talk about what's up here in our mind. Did you know that 80% of an entrepreneur's success is here in your mind? Are you making the best decisions for your business? And are you making the important decisions for where you are right now? Let's just talk about some different stages. If you are getting started, you need to be making decisions about getting your list and something to sell. But first, getting your list. That's the number one. You don't even need to create a website right now. You don't need to worry about tech. You don't really need to worry about legal or taxes or all those other things. You got to sort of make some money to have to start doing some of those things. Um, those are, And I will say what I have found is a lot of times people spend their time worrying about all these things because they're afraid to actually pull the trigger and start building their list and start creating something to sell or finding someone else's affiliate product to sell. It is fear. Am I really going to be able to do it? Am I going to make any money? Is it, Am I going to fall on my face? Well, you're not going to know until you do it. If you start worrying about all those extra things, that's not making you any money. Creating a website is not making you any money. Worrying about whatever the apps you need to use, that's not making you any money. You need to start with the most important decision if you're getting started building a list and finding something to sell, whether you create it yourself or someone else, use someone else's product. If you are scaling, then you need to look at maybe where are my issues? Where are my problems? How can I take what is successful and multiply it over and over and over again? And sometimes we do get focused on things that aren't really that important. So make sure that you are focusing on what's important where you are in your business right now. All right, let's talk about some of those decisions. What do we create? How do what what do we launch? How do we make that decision? Here's what I would encourage you to do. You need to if you need to first be building that list. So you need to go to your audience and find out what their problem is and solve the problem. Again, that may be you creating a, a product to sell or it may be finding someone else's and you recommending it. I believe there are two strategies in, when we provide a product for our people and you've got to decide which strategy is yours. Number one is a low price strategy. If you're going to sell something for 10 or $20 or 30, you're going to have to sell a whole lot of them. So this works well, and this depends on who you are. If you have a big list, you can do a bunch of low products. And as long as they are buyers on your list and you can, you can sell a whole bunch of them. Or if you decide to run ads and you can run ads successfully, sell those low ticket things and get people buying on a regular basis, those low ticket, 10, 20, $30 products. That's one strategy. The other strategy is a high price item. And um, you don't need as many sales. For, and I also believe that if you have a small list, this is what you need to be doing. You need to sell something for more than 10 or $20. This works even in those niches that you say, oh, they don't spend money. Even in the niches that are um, single income family. I have a whole business in the homeschool world. And a lot of my people that I work with are homeschoolers don't spend money. Homeschoolers aren't doing this. But I'm going to give you an example. Um, I recommend a writing curriculum. Well, pretty much every curriculum is going to be over $100. But I recommend a writing curriculum called IEW. And a lot of their products are at least $150, $200 a piece. And they sell them on a regular basis. 
because it's solving their problem. So I do think it's really important. You can choose, if you choose low ticket, make sure the value is a low price. It matches. If you choose high price, then that's what you want to do. And you want to make sure your value matches it as well. So I sell a course um, for $197 and people think, really? And it's basically how to homeschool. And yes, I have people buying it every year on a regular basis. I'll talk about that at the end. Now, so you've got two strategies. You've got to make that decision. And then some of you need to think, where do I start? Even if you've had a business for a while, if you're not selling anything, if you're not making money, you need to come back to where to start. And I would say list building is where everyone needs to start because you need to build a list and you need to go to those people and find their problems so then you can find a product to sell them. You also, when you have a product to sell them, you want people to sell it to. And if you have not been building your list, you don't have anyone to sell it to. So you got to go back and spend a bunch of time. So I recommend making this decision of building your list at the same time you create your product. All right. You build your list even as you find out what their problem is. That's really where we start. And then we begin to create a course or a product to solve that problem. But every week you should be doing something to build your list. I'm going to say it again. If you're multitasking, come back to me. Every week, you need to do spend some time building your list. All right? And I think it's really important, like I said at the beginning, don't worry about problems that are down the road. If you're not making money, you don't need to worry about all the apps that you think you should have. You don't really need to worry about taxes because, you know what I mean, money. You're not making any money to pay taxes on. You can deal with that later. Tech. If you don't, if you're not making money, we don't need to have all the perfect member area and all this stuff. You can just use a platform that solves that problem for you. You really need to take your time, your mental time, and focus it on what's important right now. Worrying about that, searching for that, that doesn't really matter. But I do understand you're worried about legal things. Well, until you start to have a list, and you put it out there, you really don't even have any legal issues as well. Again, I think the problem is we're afraid. It's fear. And we're like, if I put it out there, what's going to happen? Well, you're not going to know until you actually put it out there. So quit worrying about all those things, especially um, you're not afraid of those things. You're afraid that when I actually put something out, it's not going to work. All right. Then the other thing I want to talk to you about is making a good decision about where do you invest in your business? You are investing in your business, aren't you? And in you. I think it's really important. I invest in education every year on a regular basis. I have to make decisions about where I'm going to invest my money and continue to be educated with what's going on. So one, you need to follow someone that has proven strategies. They, The proof is in the pudding. All right. You need to follow when you put money in for education. It needs to be with someone that has proven strategies. And then I also think if you're going to put money in, you ought to be getting some help with the mindset. Again, 80 percent of your success is in your mind. I, why would people buy from me? I'm afraid this isn't going to work. Is this the best thing? It's all up here. All those voices talking to you. I highly encourage you that when you invest in your education, that you follow proven strategies, but you also get encouragement because it's going to get tiring and you're going to get burned out sometimes. You need someone that will encourage you and help you with that mindset. Um, and the other thing you need to think about is when, if you have, yeah, it's one thing to invest in something that's $27, okay? That's sort of like maybe a no-brainer. But if you're going to invest in something that's $500, $1,000, $2,000, $5,000, you need to think about why and how you're going to use it. I personally don't invest in anything that expensive unless I plan to actually use it and plan to recoup my money within that year. And I will give you an example. When I invested in Digital Course Academy. I invested in September. I was going to work through that whole thing in the fall. And in January, I was going to have this done and ready. And so you need to think about if you're going to invest in education, 
What? How can you recoup your investment? How long will it take you to recoup your investment? Like I did say, I invest in a digital course academy in 2021, September. It was $2,000. And you know what? Well, actually, it's $1,997. I launched, I redid my course. I launched it in January. So September, October, November, December, January. It took me four months. I launched and that first uh, launch, I'm selling a $197 course and I made $1,933. I pretty much recouped the entire investment. And then I continued to follow the proven strategies that I was being taught in Digital Course Academy. I focused only on that course instead of doing something different every single month, which was my old strategy. I thought that would help me and give my people variety. No, that didn't work. I focused on one course for that whole 2022 year. In 2022, I tripled my income from Raising Leaders Not Followers from 2021. So I I made money. I sold it as a course. It wasn't a very good course. I sold it at the wrong price in 2021. And in 2022, I redid everything and I tripled my income. So I would just really encourage you to follow proven strategies, but also get some mindset help. That would be a decision that if I were going to make um, as well. Wouldn't it be great if you, I mean, I will tell you when I invest in uh, my education, I can stop stressing about money 99% of the time. I don't have to run on caffeine or something else. I can get to my family commitments. I stop missing all my family commitments and I stop putting my dreams on hold. And one of the reasons I am right here at the beach, I know it's um, a little past summertime, is by the time you're listening to this or watching this, I will be on the beach in Florida. I'm recording this um, the day before I leave because I wanted to make sure you got it. And I'm going to be on the beach. And yes, I'm taking a mini personal slash business retreat. And I hope to walk along the beach and think about what's going on in my personal life, but also my business life. And y'all know I'm a person of faith, so I'll be doing some praying too. And hopefully just get some clear direction. Change in pace, slow down at the beach, change in place. I'm not in Texas. I'm going to the, or in the middle of Texas. I'm going to a Florida beach. It's going to change my perspective. And I think will give me some real vision for the end of this year and all of 2025. Because if I can stop all that worrying, I can start creating whatever it is I need to create that I sell oh just one time a year. And that's what I've done. I did that already. I stopped all that worrying about money. I could start growing an income and scaling it the, on the line, not based on the number of hours that I put in. And then every sale that I make, and this is the truth, I know that that is serving someone's life, someone's family. It's helping them. I have plenty of testimonials that there, I go through the course and it's changed the kind of homeschool mom I am. So pay attention to what kind of, where you invest your money. Uh, so we want to make sure we are making the right decisions. Where are you focusing? What is your pricing strategy? Are you focusing on the right things of your business right now? And then how and where are you investing your education money? I'm going to close with Digital Course Academy because it's only open for a few more days. I do have a bonus package and you will get group coaching, but it will be small. I'm going to pretty much sure it'll be 10 or less people. You'll get hand-holding with me and be able to ask me questions as well. If you want to see what my whole bonus is, uh, you get that. I actually think I still have a slot open for a course review. When you get ready to create your course and launch it, I will do a personal one-on-one uh, -on -one review of what you are planning to do. You can go read all about that at familyebiz.com slash DCA bonus. DCA bonus. I would love for you to join me. I will leave the links wherever you are listening to this in the show notes. Just take some time and make sure you're not worrying about the wrong decisions. You're really focusing on what will grow your business now. Don't worry about all those extra decisions later on down the road. Hey, thanks for spending time with me. I am Carrie Beck with Family eBiz. We'll talk to you next time.